This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Larson. We start off tonight with news of a fire at a South Fargo duplex that broke out at 6 a.m. this morning. Both sides of the duplex were home at the time, but they were safely evacuated. Fire crews rescued a kitten and gerbils. The cause of the fire is unknown and the home is currently not to be occupied, but the Red Cross is working with the residents to provide temporary shelter. And another fire happened earlier today, just after 2 p.m. at an apartment at 383 Prairie Wood Circle South in Fargo. The 911 caller said there was smoke coming from the window of the building. The fire was able to be put out in 10 minutes and everyone is reported to be, have evacuated safely. All residents were allowed back into the building, but the residents of the fire unit will be displaced until repairs are made. The initial damage estimate is five grand. It was a hot one today, but people still came out to West Fargo's annual street fair at the downtown yards on Cheyenne. It brought together local artists, vendors, food trucks, and services by lining downtown Cheyenne for the community to shop. The summer heat is getting hotter and hotter here in the Fargo-Moorhead area, which means air conditioning will be relied upon to cool people off. But some have already been impacted by the weather. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling brings us the story. The summer heat has been unrelenting this month, and there are some who have been impacted by it. One Fargo man recently suffered from heat stroke while working at a local restaurant. It was like a wave of heat hit my body, and then that kind of made me like not feel great, and then I got real cold, and so that just threw my body off, and then I, like, I yacked. And then it just, I got dizzy, got some tunnel vision. Fry said what helped him break it was taking a cold shower and drinking water when he got home. The Mayo Clinic says one should immerse yourself in cold water, use evaporation cooling techniques, pack yourself with ice and cooling blankets, and give yourself medication to stop the shivering. Uh, just try to stay as hydrated as you can, try to stay as cool as you can, keep that heat off you a little bit. One way to beat the summer heat is to have a functioning air conditioning unit. I spoke with a local expert on how to keep yours running during these scorching temps. But the big thing is that the system stays clean and that's if you want it to work at peak efficiency, everything has to be clean. But the, the vents really should be open so the air can get out. We should have that filter clean. The outdoor unit should be clean. Those are kind of the, the main things that a homeowner needs to look at before going into a season like this where it gets hot. Eisenhower also says that if you notice ice building up inside the unit, give it a break and allow the ice to melt off. Because if you, if you let it run too long and it gets iced up, there's nothing we can do for you until that ice is actually gone. In West Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. It's forecasted to be triple digits tomorrow for the Fargo-Moorhead area. And some in the Northern Valley have been dealing with blowing dust due to the high winds today. We have forecaster Summer Schnellbach here with a check of how strong the wind was today and how hot we will be tomorrow. Thank you so much, Alex, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Take a look at this. It might be hard to tell what you're looking at, but you are looking at a highway obscured by blowing dust. This is near Ada, Minnesota. Thank you so much to Ruben for taking the time to send this video into us. And many in the Northern Valley were dealing with this very site. Here's another photo blowing dust along I-29 near Thompson. In fact, I drove through this this morning as well. I was in Grand Forks coming back to Fargo and it was tough going at times and take a look at this one looking out into a dry field near Golden Lake. So that dry soil just being lofted into the air due to the strong winds that we had today. The Grand Forks Airport taking the cake with the strongest wind gust today of 56 miles per hour, 53 mile per hour gust in Hampton, Argyle and Langdon, both at 52 miles per hour. And at the Fargo Airport, the peak gust was recorded at 49 miles per hour. Now, even though today was a warm one, our attention turns to the heat, extreme heat for Sunday and Monday. Alex, we're looking at some record breaking possibilities for Sunday and Monday. So I'll break it down in your full forecast coming up here in a few minutes. I feel like I've never heard triple digits before because it's been so long since it happened. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Summer. <laughs> Plans to celebrate our newest national holiday, Juneteenth, are taking place all over the country. And one of the most important pieces of Juneteenth history is on display in Dallas, Texas. This is the original copy of the Juneteenth General Order Number no. 3 document on display to the public now through the end of July. 
So a little history here. On June 19, 1865, this document was read when Union soldiers landed in Galveston, officially pronouncing all enslaved African Americans living in Texas as free. That moment came two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which freed enslaved peoples all across the country. But the news had never made it to Texas because of the resistance here at the time. This is the only known original copy of the order. So I've been on the board for six years now for the Dallas Historical Society and of all the wonderful pieces that we have, the Juneteenth document is uh, just a personal uh, thing that's really personal affects me because I've celebrated Juneteenth my whole life. My family uh, was really big into celebrating and to, to know that the only known original copy of the document is here in Dallas is always a big deal to me. That document has always been a part of the Dallas Historical Society's permanent archives, but it's displayed during the first federally recognized Juneteenth makes it a perfect way to commemorate the holiday. The Russian state television showed video of two U.S. military veterans who went missing in Ukraine. Alex Druki served in the U.S. Army. He served two tours in Iraq. His mother said that he asked for her blessing to go, and she said she gave a reluctant blessing because she was proud he was willing to risk his life for others. Andy Wynn had just become engaged before leaving for Ukraine. He served in the U.S. Marines. The two reportedly went missing when their group came under heavy fire on June 9th. The U.S. State Department has not officially confirmed that the two men have been captured, and the State Department said it was looking into reports of Russian-backed troops captured Americans. State Department officials reiterated a warning that Americans should not be going to Ukraine. Later on Valley News Live at 10, COVID vaccines for kids under 5 are in sight, but not all parents are on board. And the warm-up is already starting. It's not going to cool down anytime soon. Overnight temperatures only drop into the 70s, so already warm and on top of the heat. We're going to see lots of sunshine tomorrow. Be sure to layer on the sunscreen multiple times if you plan to be outside for tomorrow. I'll break down your first alert weather days for some extreme heat right after this.